In this episode of Sailing Dark Angel, I try to magically erase our beanbag chairs. Then, as beautiful Shroud Key fills up, we sail away to Compass Key. It's an easy, relaxing sail until suddenly we're doing 123 knots sideways and backwards. At Compass Key, it's time for a bottom scrubbing. If you like our videos, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. It's free for you and really helps our channel. What the hell? That is what is left of the erasers that I used on the beanbag chairs because they were filthy. Want to come see what I did? Yeah. So I'm getting on that spot there, but I did all this. Nice, you almost want to sit on them again. <laughs> so I found out that the magic erasers uh, clean the beanbag chairs and get all the moldy grossness off them, so it needs to be done really bad, but I'm going to cover up on because the sun is beating down and I'm supposed to be doing something and I just don't want to scratch today. Bad. I'm sure it's a lot of it is just dirt. We don't have a salt water, we don't have a fresh water rinse on our deck and I wish we did for the chain, but we don't. Our chain would be in better shape I'm sure if we had a way to fresh water rinse it every time. job, babe. Thank you. Oh, wow. They look completely different. They're not new, but they're not. They were grimy. They, they were grimy. Good. This one's pretty much dry, so I'm going to flip it over so I can dry the other side. Like, just a huge difference to, to where it was. We'll have to test them out tonight with the sun down. Absolutely. Yeah, the deck lockers get wet and this one's not too bad because it's fenders and lines so if the stuff in there gets wet and slimy it's like yeah but over here is the sail locker and we've got a staysail and our spinnaker in here and you don't really want that getting wet and staying wet so that'll help dry it out hopefully we'll be using that spinnaker soon when i finish my chores i like to dance and relax. So what are we doing today, Captain Dave? 
We are sailing out of what became kind of a crowded Shroud Key. That's a lot of boats. Bye, Shroud Key. We were surrounded by boats. But surrounded. We still have lots of room. It's, yeah. it's a nice anchorage. It is a very nice anchorage. Shallow, and the holding's good. Yeah. And uh, we are sailing, sailing. There's no motors, as you can hear. It's a beautiful morning. What time did we leave anchor? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock in the morning. Dave slept in. We've gotten near <laughs> nearly a quarter mile. We're uh, <laughs> we're doing a rocking three knots. Well, we only have six point five. Oh, the wind's picking up. Look at that. Seven knots. Seven knots. Eight knots. So oh my we're God. doing. Better take a reef. Oh gosh. I wish he wouldn't joke about that after getting caught in that storm with that the surprise storm and we didn't last reef year. at all. Yeah. Was that last year, really? That was last year. Yeah. It was last year doom. Last year was everything that can go wrong probably already has. Get a good shot of the sails and the boat next and to it. And the telltales that are just hanging there because there ain't no wind. sailing pretty well and we're going around this key over here this is elbow key and once we get around there we're gonna turn uh, into the wind a little bit and that should pick us up a little bit of speed wind is directly out of the east yes yeah, so we're gonna be so one of the really cool the things down. is the fact that because we have the wind coming from the east and of course the sun rises in the east it means that all of our sails are off to the other side of where the sun's coming up, which means that we get full sun on our solar panels so we can generate power faster. The problem with getting here was that we were directly going into the sun and of course our sails up meant that our solar panels were completely covered and we weren't getting any power, but now we are. So that's a win. You'd think I was Italian talk with my hands a lot. Well, that's because you hang out with me and I'm not Italian. <laughs> you're a mutt. <laughs> that's for sure. You can't really be in a hurry when you're sailing. Ooh, wind picked back up to seven knots. It was down to four a minute ago. We're doing so two knots. our speed will pick up. We're doing just over two knots. Got about 25, 30 miles to go. I did look under the boat when I snorkeled and uh, it's, it's clean. So there's no barnacles that are hanging on or anything. So we're, we're clean. And the sails are set pretty good. Considering the wind keeps on dying. But the telltales are all lined up except for that one up there in the middle that's stuck. That's about as good as you can ask for. The wind is southeast. And we're headed south. But all in all, that's a pretty good day for sailing. If you like calm, quiet, Shh. I'll go make some breakfast. Our chart plotter completely lost its satellite fix and had us doing 123 knots uh, backwards and sideways. I want to apologize for not uh, filming this as it was happening, but we all know that when we're in crisis mode, um, the last thing you're really thinking about is the camera, but now we've got our charts back. And honestly, guys, if you don't have your charts in front of you, you can't see where the coral heads are um, and you can't see where you're going. So it does become a bit of a scary situation. So what did you do, Dave, to fix that? Uh, I reset the interface box, but here's an idea of what our course looked like. Went over to here, zigzagged a little bit, went over here, went over here, went backwards that way, backwards that way, backwards that way. Out to Went there. Way over there. Look look at the pink. Look at all the pink. That's our track, apparently. Yeah, we were all over the place and it was so very, we had very no upsetting. satellite. We had no satellite fix. So and what it turned out to be is this interface box allows everything to talk in between itself. So right now it's still not working right. It hasn't booted up properly. I hit the reset and it's not working. So that needs to be fixed. And all the connections appear to be good. I gotta do a little more digging and find out why that's not working. But that connects the AIS to the backbone of the system and to the radio and then 
all of that feeds through to the chart plotter. But thankfully all it took was a reset and we're back on course again. So we, we can get the chart books out and we can go from our, our GPS position, but going in through some of these cuts, that's a real tight way to do that. So Somebody went by us with a week. Yeah, we got a week. Oh well. Anyway, we're back on course and sailing and I got to do some more digging and find out why that box needs to be reset and why it didn't come back green after it did reset. So there might be an issue with it. We, we want to show you this kind of thing because you have a you know beautiful day for sailing, nothing's going wrong and then suddenly, just like that, it goes sideways. It just goes sideways and you're in crisis mode and of course, again, I apologize for not picking up the camera and starting to film right when that was happening. It did cross my mind for a split second, but you know, the upsetness is going on and we're trying to hurry and figure out what's what's happening with our with our charts, but now the crisis has passed and we want to relay to you the fact that it can go, happen at any time. Anytime. We're sitting there having a great, we had breakfast out here, no problem, whatever. And then just everything goes sideways, so. Well, we're negotiating our way into Compass Key right near Rachel's bubble bath. Let's take a look. We're coming up to it. And I don't want to ever, ever, ever do it again at night because that sucked. There's only a couple boats there. That's, that's good. So we made it. We're here and we're anchored. And it's low tide actually we're about two hours outside of low tide um we're just at the mouth there of where rachel's bubble bath is and during low tide it's actually <laughs> you see the lighter blue right there that's above ground like that will just sink right down we're in about six feet of water currently um and then we're gonna hit low tide probably we'll have maybe five and a half feet of water underneath us which is lots it's lots it's fine but uh high tide tomorrow is at 150 which means that we can go in tomorrow and watch the show because you want to go into rachel's bub bubble bath at high tide it's anchor check time at compass key got a monohull coming in got a charter cat right here oh, okay. and just us chain is heading out that way got about 60 feet out so she's got a bit of a swim Thank <laughs> you. 
starfish. <laughs> right under the sugar scoop. <laughs> Is it? Uh huh. Like my fins are keeping me in place, like for real. Right. That is a nasty waterline. <sighs> <Yeah. laughs> How's your bottom? My bottom is clean. <laughs> You've got a few less barnacles on it. I use this, and Dave, I use this. Get rid of them barnacles. Gotta have a smooth bottom. Be careful, don't fall in. It's looking a whole lot better already. That was the first scrape. We gotta do a wipe and get some more of the gunk off of it and get a scrubby pad and scrub it all. But uh, that's a big improvement already. And then we'll take our hookah rig that was uh, donated to us from very good friends. And we will go down, get underneath the boat and do a little bit more thorough scraping. We just didn't have the money to do a bottom job this year. We barely had the money to eat, but things are looking up. And uh, hopefully by this time next year, we should have a nice, smooth, fresh bottom job and maybe some gel coat work. Ah. Best drying spot in the house. Absolutely. Only room for one, unfortunately. <laughs> Claimed. <laughs> Just look at the long beach there. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? <laughs>